It's the Daily Dog. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Dog. I'm thankful that you're joining me today. It is a Wednesday. We have made it to the middle of the week, and this week we're making Wednesday a weird Wednesday. And I'm happy to say that the band that is providing our daily dose, actually our weekly dose of weird this week is Pink Floyd. And I am happy to get to some early, early Pink Floyd, the earliest Pink Floyd that I think that there is. We're going to the debut album and their debut single today. Um, while I uh, was trying to figure out what I was going to do this week with repertoire, I consulted our um, our master list. This is a list that is cultivated by uh, upvotes and recommendations through our private Discord uh, for our patrons. And our patrons can, when they recommend titles, they can say, oh, this one should be for a Daily Doug, or this one should be uh, a Masterpiece Friday, or a Metal Monday, or a Weird Wednesday, or what have you. And so I can go to my spreadsheet, and I can sort by Weird Wednesday. So all of the potential uh, pieces that have been suggested to me for Weird Wednesday, I can see. And then I uh, picked the one that had the most number of upvotes from our community, the one with the most buy-in. And the song that was picked is called Bike by Pink Floyd. It's from their first album. So on Sunday, when I announced that I was going to be doing uh, this song, Bike by Pink Floyd, uh, this coming Wednesday for Weird Wednesday, I got a bunch of people saying, all right, cool, some really Pink Floyd. But Bike is a short song. You should be doing this one or this one or this one. Or you know what? If you're doing Bike, you might as well just do the whole damn album. Come on now. <laughs> so we're not doing the whole album, but I have heeded the advice of our community and we're going to do not one, not two, we're going to do three songs today. So I am glad that you are here. Um, when I started doing this uh, series, The Daily Doug, I of course knew of Pink Floyd, but I had no idea that the band in their early days was as experimental and uh, in my mind, odd, as uh, they are, <laughs> as, as, as what they sound like. I knew them for, or I know them for, their epic guitar uh, and rock classics, right? So th this music is different for me from what I knew of Pink Floyd. Uh, the band was formed in 1965. They quickly gained a following as one of the first uh, truly British psychedelic rock groups. They were founded by Sid Barrett, who plays guitar and sings lead vocals, and he is joined by Nick Mason on the drums, Roger Waters on bass and vocals, and Richard Wright on keyboards and vocals. Their debut album is called The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. It was released in 1967. The, uh, the title of that album comes from a 1908 novel called The Wind in the Willows, where, uh, as I understand it, I have not read the, um, uh, the, uh, the novel. As I understand it, some of the characters encounter the nature god Pan, who uh, plays his panpipes at uh, daybreak. So uh, we're going to listen to a couple of songs off of The Piper at the Gates of Dawn, but we're going to start with their debut single called Arnold Lane. It was released months before their debut album in that same year of 1967. And then we're going to go on and listen to uh, Pow, R, Talk, H, and Bike from uh, The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Um, you'll notice that David Gilmore is not with the band at this particular time. Uh, David didn't join the band until after, uh, Piper was released. And, uh, and by April of the next year of 1968, uh, Sid Barrett was, uh, no longer with the band due to his deteriorating, uh, mental health issues. So let's start with Arnold Lane, y'all. This is not included on the first album. This is just a, a, the, the debut single that comes out. And um, it's written by Sid Barrett, released in March of 1967. Uh, for their very first song, they're coming out swinging, y'all. This song is about a transvestite <laughs> who has a strange hobby of stealing women's clothes and undergarments from clothing lines. So let's uh, figure out uh, what the hell is wrong with Arnold, all right? Uh, Arnold Lane by Pink Floyd, their debut single. Off we go. Arnold 
It's a real Beatles vibe, isn't it? Hmm. Creepy. I'm watching this uh, video that had been put together for this. It features members of the band dressing up uh, and uh, dismembering and carrying around a mannequin on this beach. And it said, sing it. That's creepy. The masks are creepy. There they are. Wow, Roger was young. <laughs> All were young. Right? It's an A chord. Seeing where they're going with it. Nowhere for now. Now he's got a nasty reverse footage. That's cool. Same, it takes two to know. I found a note that Roger said that this uh, is based on a real person, actually, uh, that his mother and uh, Sid's mother had uh, students uh, uh, living with them as tenants because they live near a women's college. And Arnold or whoever uh, he was would uh, often come by and steal clothes off of the washing lines. Uh, you know, uh, the debut single. You think of comfortably numb and time and money and dogs and all of it, right? And you're like, that's where they started. It's just interesting to me. Uh, now he's caught a nasty sort of person. They gave him time, doors bang, chain gang. He hates it. Uh, poor Arnold is um, not going to fit in with the rest of society if he keeps stealing women's undergarments. <laughs> it's not how you do it, Arnie. Uh, but yeah, that was the debut single uh, that they recorded uh, early on in the year, and then they work on the rest of the album, and the album gets re uh, released later in the year. So I'm going to move on um, to Pow R Talk H. If I am mispronouncing that, y'all will let me know, I am sure. The songwriting credits to this go to the entire band instead of just to Sid. It says that this is an instrumental with wordless vocals by uh, Barrett and Waters and Wright. Uh, I didn't find much background information for the song, but uh, apparently the title comes from the Allied military phonetic spelling alphabet that was used during World War II. Um, so let, let's, let's figure it out and see what, what this is about. Uh, POW R, Power Torch, <laughs> Power Torch. <laughs> Pow R Talk H. Off we go. It's an A minor. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> what is that? Oh, my God. 
This is weird, y'all. No, it's not so weird. Doink, doink. What a weird track. It's almost completely in this ear. There's almost nothing in the stereo mix on this side. It's just over a static chord, it sounds like G minor to me. stuff at the beginning has to come back, right? In some way? Down by half step. Down by another half step. Down by another half step. The experimentation to try something like this for a mainstream album of popular music, and it's your debut album. Boggles my mind. But if you're creating soundscapes for people to really experience the music, the music becomes experiential as much as it is when you listen to it. Listen to that! Huh. Then it's just minor one. The major four. Which they do a lot of in this band. <laughs> for their later stuff. It's in the same key as um, Shine On You Crazy Diamond, at least that main riff. Right? Sounds cool, sounds great. Or am I gonna run into a Pict and some furry animals in this? Bring it home, Nick. Well, it's a weird Wednesday. Do I not deliver? Come on, y'all. Pink Floyd. What was that, y'all? Pow R Talk H. I, I came across a, um, a note here that uh, Nick Mason said they were hanging out at uh, Abbey Road. Uh, and the Beatles were there and recording portions of Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band. I mean, right? To have Pink Floyd and, and the Beatles in the same spot. It's kind of amazing, too, to think about. And uh, the band notices some of the voice effects and the editing tricks that's being employed with uh, what the Beatles are doing. And they're like, hey, we should try some of that stuff. And they wanted to try some of the same techniques in their album. So I guess that's part of, of uh, what comes from that. I'm going to move on, though, y'all, uh, to the last one that we're doing today. This is called Bike. It is the last track 
on their debut album. Um, this is the one that was upvoted the most. So after that last one, I have no idea what I'm in for here. So let's take a look at Bike from Pink Floyd. Off we go. No intro, just right into it. Big time Beatles vibe, right? From the same era. That's a hefty delay. Hang on a second. I'm hearing the vocal in this here, and the delay or a um you know, a remnant of it, an echo of it is in this ear. And, you know, having a delay or a chorus effect is one thing, but the the lagging line is almost like a half beat behind. It's, it's really throwing me off. <laughs> I'm not sure I like it. Uh, how delayed that is. I'm going to back up a little bit and I am going to keep on rolling. Look, it's a bit of a joke. The poetry really doesn't metrically fit either, does it? Glad Gerald is a good mouse. You're the kind of girl that fits in with my world. I'll give you anything, everything, if you want. He's got some gingerbread men. Some rhyme, some ching, most of them are clockwork. Let's go into the other room and make them work. I'm gonna pause it there because I need to talk about this, y'all. This was, some of you may think that this is uh, not weird at all. To me, it's it fits in, right? So we're, we're, we're doing okay for a weird Wednesday. Uh, I've got a bike. You can ride it if you like. I've got a basket, a bell that rings, and things that make it look good. I'd give it to you if I could, but I borrowed it. <laughs> the second thing he has is a cloak. It's a bit of a joke. It's There's a tear up the front. It's red and black. I've had it for months. Uh, so he's got a mouse. He's got some gingerbread. It's a song about flirting isn't it? It's it's about trying to woo someone that you like or attempting to attract that uh, you're the kind of girl that fits in with my world. I'll give you anything, everything, if you want thing. <laughs> uh, that's, you know, you're trying to attract that special girl with all of your special belongings. He's got his bike, his basket, a bell that rings. He's got a cloak. Uh, he's got uh, his friend, a mouse, a good old Gerald there. Um, and some tasty gingerbread cookies. And then, y'all, he talks about he's got a special room, which um, is a little disconcerting, but he's got a room of musical tunes. Some rhyme, some ching, most of them are clockwork. Let's go into the other room and make them work. And then my lyrics say, instrumental outro. So let's see uh, what happens in uh, the, uh, the special room. Okay, here we go. We have to walk to the room. I think that, um, he is showing her his clock.
I'm getting vibes of the beginning of uh, Back to the Future. With all the clocks. Right? The mixing is is amazing, though. When you think that they're working with, I think, just a four-track recorder at the time. That's not how you play that particular instrument, I don't think. What? What kind of sound is that, y'all? And... That's it. You know, I am picturing myself, y'all, as um, as a young upstanding lad in the uh, in the late sixties, and I come across oh this new album by Pink Floyd I think I'll try it um, oh psychedelic okay I'll get uh, a little a little cannabis maybe or or something stronger and I I go into the situation I listen to the album and I get to the end of that and I am not uh dropped off at the end of my listening experience in a spot that makes sense to me that is weird makes sense that it's on a weird wednesday unbelievable that's really interesting i had no idea that this band was as weird as they started out to be uh it's quite uh fascinating to me to to then think about their longevity i mean just this year I mean, this is a band that was founded in 1965. In 2022, uh, a couple of members that are still uh, from the early days are still together and making music uh, for um, important music, you know, that, that speaks to the world around us. But um, I don't know what I think, y'all. Um, the uh, Let's talk about the, the novel that this is based on a little bit. I, I did some reading, a pan, the uh, Piper from the novel um, in this uh, in this story is particularly helpful uh, for some of the other characters that he encounters. Uh, the music, his music helps them to not be so overwhelmed in their quest. And when the characters achieve uh, their success, Pan ends up vanishing and allows the characters to forget that they had even encountered him so that they won't be burdened with uh, the memory or confused by it. Uh, in a way, uh, as I was reading some of that background, it strikes me that Sid in, in this music was seeking to lower uh, the listener's stress levels uh, while dealing with uh, the chaotic world around us, right? Uh, to bring some humor and wit into the equation, into our listening experience. Uh, to give us a smile amid the ongoing anxiety and stresses of our days. And maybe it was as much for him as it was for the rest of us. I, I, I'm remembering uh, in Shine On You Crazy Diamond, the band refers to Sid as a piper. You remember that? Um, among other things, uh, perhaps making reference to this origin of the band uh, and, and to this book, which as I read is one was one of Sid's favorite books. I mean, when you talk about a crazy diamond, they ain't lying, y'all. Uh, this guy, uh, Sid, uh, intrigues me. Uh, I um, just his his approach to music making, and uh, the the band that that he helped start. Right, fascinating stuff. Well. Uh, for a Wednesday, I think this has been one of my weirder ones, y'all. We did three songs, Arnold Lane, Pal R, Talk H, and Bike from Pink Floyd's very first uh, year of, of existence uh, in their uh, recording output. And uh, I think I have to think about this for a little bit and, and figure out what I just listened to. But this is what we do here on The Daily Doug, and I'm happy to have you along with me experiencing this music. If you have other um, suggestions for for bands or for other um, you know pieces from Pink Floyd that you think I will find interesting, let me know in the comments. That's all for today, though. Thanks, y'all, for being with me. We'll see you next time on another edition 
uh, the Daily Doug.